Liverpool 2, Chelsea 1. And all of you Chelsea fans that have been coming to our comment section. First of all, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, one thing I realize about Chelsea fans, you guys are so passionate. I mean, like every other fan, you're p passionate. But you're also knowledgeable. You're, <laughs> you really know your team. Um, the only thing that shocked me is I think only one fan out of the eight, probably about 80, 90 comments, only one fan said Liverpool will win. Every other, well, Chelsea fans, amongst the Chelsea fans. The other Chelsea fans were all like, yeah, we're winning, we're winning, we're winning. Very, very confident. So I'm sure this was a gut punch. I was very surprised by how the teams, um, um, mm, 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 mm. well, not both of them. I was just surprised by, isn't it not Zango Much Kwakabla game, not during game. So Naziandika, before game, like lineup notes, Ninini Alafu during the game. So obviously, not having Kukurea, Rhys James starting. So let's start with positives for Chelsea. Rhys James starting was really good. Nicholas Jackson getting the goal, like he is. He's a changed man. I There's a reason I put him over Jota in the combined 11. So I have seen it. I have seen the light. This boy is bowling. Um, and then Lavia in midfield also looks really, really good. The one thing I've learned about this Chelsea side, I feel like from the outside looking in, they went and talked to... Every player was told, listen, <laughs> you have 40 minutes. In a normal team, you have about 60 to 75 minutes to do something on the field. If nothing works, we'll change you. This team, people get hooked off at 45. Unatolewa. If you're not doing anything, if you're not performing, you're out. Unatolewa. So um, I think the players know. And that was my biggest worry, was that you just yank people out in the middle of the game, like at 45 minutes. A lot of them say, kujama na samazi. Especially someone like uh, Pedro Neto, who you signed for 50 million. Or Sancho, who you've signed for a lot of money and promised him playing time, right? So... Um, yeah, I think they've been told because the way they're reacting to it, they're reacting really well. <laughs> People know Kitolo Metolo and Onaishia. Napio Kikujandani, you're trying to prove because every second counts, literally. The squad is huge. My only issue with that is at some point, you will have to, this, these players have to go through tough times together. And if you keep changing and shifting and changing, today, I won't blame him, I won't blame Mareska so much because he didn't have a choice. Kukurea was suspended, Fofana was suspended. So he had to make changes anyway, right? And then Enzo came back. I think he was ill when he came back from international duty um, or something. Something happened. So he couldn't start this game. But I, I feel like, as someone mentioned in the live, when we did the live, Lavia looks really good in midfield. So I, I, it, was, it may not have been the best time to remove him. But also the captain needs to come on and do something. So I get it. Um, oh, the red card. That was supposed to be a red card. Now, listen. Yesterday, my team, Arsenal, we lost to Bournemouth. Here, Red Kaja Saliba, yesterday, I had no issues with it, to be honest. Jana, refs were very consistent. Three, there were five, rec, five red cards yesterday. Kudu Salifanyo Jinga Kachapamtu. Philogene, Alipata red card. But three players got red cards for last men fouling. That was um, Ryan Fraser, Saliba, and Anderson of Fulham. Now, if you're consistently giving for professional last man, I have no issues with it, right? The Saliba one, I can argue why it's not a red card. But I will also accept why it's a red card because, I mean, clearly he's the last man, sour. But in both cases, I'm seeing... Um, well, you compare this and the Tosin case now. Tosin clearly fouls the guy. Again, it's around halfway... Um, the one, the, what one, uh, one, someone told me during the live when we we're doing the live for the Barca game is that the proximity, Nani was not as close, the supporting player was not as close. So, Gabriel or Ben White, whoever it was in the Arsenal game, was not as close to Saliba as uh, Colwell was to Tosin. But <laughs> my argument remains if, if the goal, if between the goalkeeper and the last defender, if there's no one there, right? Even if you're close on the sides, haven't you still denied? Because at this point, we're assuming that this player is so quick, he's going to get to the other post, to the post and actually get a shot off target. If you compare the two of them, Evan Nilsson and Jota, I'd say Evan Nilsson is faster, if that's what we're going to go by, right? But we're not going by that. Like, by the letter of the law, what we're saying is that was how close was someone. So... It, it, I, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. And then the reason why they said the Saliba one was was more of a red card, was actually turned from yellow to red, was because it was reckless. 
what was not reckless about Tosin's challenge? Like the official report actually says he was reckless because the ref gave a yellow card. The reason it was turned from yellow to red was because of recklessness. So how was this not reckless? So, I mean, those are just things that just need to be cleared up. And for me, I'm tired about arguing with the refs, talking about refs. Um, um, I'm going to talk about certain decisions that were made uh, in the podcast. We have a Football Focus Weekly podcast with Keenan that we're doing this week. We're going to go over every game and we're going to talk about them. And I'm going to talk about the refereeing decisions. But I'm going to come at it from a perspective of this is what they're doing, this is what they said. So just holding people accountable. But not... Dime fika point ni mataku jam juu ya refereeing decision. Udi, sasa ni tajam weekend yangu nini ni kwa na weekend mbaya juu ya ref. Haiwezi kwa hivyo. Nataka na jua team yangu itachapwa nini but at the end of the day it's affecting everyone. So that's the consolation. It's affecting everyone. Um the penalties. <laughs> that's something else I'm going to talk about as well in the podcast. But ya kwanza ilikuwa pen sawa. Ya pili Sidan ilikuwa pen juu alimguza hiyo nao tuliona si ndio um, but it's just the decisions in between so singine a liverpool player falls a chelsea player it's obvious clear as clear as day then a chelsea player same thing happens and it's even not even a touch and then you get like colwell was getting some very uh, weird calls i don't know why and just some of those things again just consistency that's all we are asking for mazi what a imenibo <laughs> Anyway, um uh, uh Nicholas Jackson was really good. I really enjoyed his goal. Salah had a goal and assist. Curtis Jones was quite advanced in this game. I I the game plan really really worked well with him. Um and it justified uh, benching McAllister even though McAllister was said to have been ill as well. But yeah, Chelsea were really impressive. They caused a lot of problems for Liverpool. I think there's a lot to take out of this game if you're playing Liverpool. Uh, with how Chelsea attacked them how they nullified some of their attacks there's 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 good there's some there's uh, there's good things like i'm i'm honestly impressed by how good Chelsea are and i will i will on my end try, try and nikki watch games and you ni watch with a lot of really see what they are trying to do and just discuss with you guys because you guys watch your team day day in day out there are days i'm not going to watch Chelsea every time but just have that discussion and see where your team is going and so but generally I'm very impressed. I am especially by how Umsame managed to kuleta us together together na yo we're going towards one goal and they're trying to get there and they're doing well. So yeah, Liverpool versus Chelsea. We'll talk about it more football football focus weekly. It will come out this week on Spotify and on YouTube and on TikTok and on IG. So yeah, watch out. Peace.